Hello and welcome to my next tutorial by Prepomix. This time I will show you how to perform a steady state dynamics analysis of a single degree of freedom spinning mass damper system uh, discussed in the previous video. So uh, let's create a new model first uh, with default settings and now I will import uh, the ge model to geometry. And this will be the same geometry uh, as we used in the previous tutorial. Uh, because we are going to analyze the same system, but this time we will analyze it using steady state dynamics, so basically uh, in frequency domain. Previously it was analyzed using model dynamics, so uh, in time domain. Uh, let's define the mesh first. I will use the default settings, 60 millimeters for maximum element size. So I will accept this and create the mesh. Now the mesh is created, I can uh, hide or, or maybe let's, let's leave it for now because I will need it for mm, one of the steps. A actually, uh, let's start from this. Uh, so mm, I will create a node set. Uh, this node set will be named BC. Uh, it will be used to apply uh, boundary conditions uh, to the uh, cube. And uh, th basically mm, this will be used to avoid uh, the interference between uh, the rigid body constraint that will be applied to one side uh, of the um, cube and uh, the boundary condition which is applied to the side faces. Uh, so <coughs> I will just um, remove the uh, nodes uh, that are that belong to, to those edges here and this way I will be able to uh, define the uh, constraint, uh, rigid body constraint without uh, any issues caused by uh, over constraint. So mm, that's a complete definition of, uh, of the node set. And uh, now mm, I can proceed to material definition. Uh, as always, uh, or almost always, this will be steel. Uh, so I will use uh, some standard uh, properties. And uh, for elasticity, I will also use a typical uh, Young's modulus and uh, Poisson's uh, ratio. And now I will accept this and create a new section. Mm, I will assign this section to the whole cube. Uh, now I can uh, actually hide the uh, mesh uh, and uh, now uh, I just need to uh, create uh, a reference point uh, in the middle of, of this face. Uh, for this purpose I can create another set, uh, no need to name it, I, I can just uh, define it like this. And now I can uh, select the reference point mm, and here I will use the uh, center of gravity option and choose the right uh, node set and then uh, the reference point will be placed in the middle of, of this uh, phase. Of course I could also use the coordinates but it's often more convenient to uh, do it this way. Uh, so now I have the reference point <coughs> for rigid body constraint and for spring. Uh, so let's define the uh, rigid body constraint. Uh, I will uh, use the, the only reference point that I have basically. Uh, and now mm, I will uh, apply the, the rigid body constraint to this phase uh, and uh, I also need to uh, define the spring uh, which is point spring uh, it's applied to, uh, to the reference point uh, so I just select the, the reference point name uh, and now I need to specify the stiffness uh, in the third direction and this will be the same value as uh, in the previous uh, tutorial since uh, like I said we are using the same uh, model uh, basi basically just analyzing it in different way uh, Alright, so that's defined uh, and now I can uh, proceed to step definitions. Uh, so let's uh, define a new step. This will be a frequency step because uh, steady state dynamics uh, is another uh, procedure in using model superposition. Uh, so frequency step is necessary for, for this. It has to be defined first and then it uh, needs to be followed by steady state dynamics step. Uh, so mm, let's enable storage. This is necessary for model uh, superposition procedures. So for both steady state dynamics and model, uh, and model uh, dynamics. Uh, now I will uh, just reduce the number of frequencies to one, uh, like in the previous tutorial, um, and uh, I can leave the, leave the mm, remaining uh, settings with defaults. Uh, now I just need to specify the boundary conditions. Uh, basically, uh, I will apply boundary condition to the node set that I created before, so I will use the BC node set, and I only have to constrain mm, the, the, mm, the, the degrees of freedom that are perpendicular to the mm, direction of the motion, so basically Y and, uh, and X, uh, those are the, the directions that I'm going to fix. And now the boundary conditions are defined, of course I can also show this using the mesh, but um, you can see that uh, this region is excluded uh, to avoid over constraint with rigid body. Mm, so basically uh, I have boundary conditions defined and uh, now I need to proceed to the most important part, so uh, the definition of the steady state dynamic step. Uh, th th this will be mm, the step right here uh, and uh, what I need to select is uh, first of all mm, harmonic will be left with default uh, yes setting because we, will, we are going to use harmonic so basically sinusoidal load 
and uh, when it comes to lower and upper frequency bound th this one is uh, quite important uh, we are going to analyze uh, frequency between fi 3 and uh, 5 hertz and this is the range that we are going to, um, to analyze here and when it comes to the number of data points uh, I will use 30 uh, that's the, mm, the the number to, to analyze between those frequencies and th this parameter determines the spacing of, of those points in this range so if I use uh, 1 uh, this will be just uniform or equal spacing and that's what I need here and now I just need to s define damping uh, this will be a constant damping with uh, the following uh, damping coefficient this is the same value as we used in the mm, previous video so uh, we only changed the, the type of step and of course uh, the you some, some settings that are specific to this uh, step because in, in model dynamics we had to select uh, incrementation settings and stuff related to time and uh, in this case we are analyzing the problem in frequency domain so uh, we need to uh, specify the, the relevant uh, data uh, all right uh, that's uh, everything that i need to define here um boundary conditions were propagated so uh, i just have to apply the load and this will be surface traction i will apply it to this phase right here and uh, i will use the value of uh, 200 uh, newtons so this will be mm, the value of this uh, surface traction load and so just one more thing um, i will uh, define for this second step history output request i will select uh, one of the nodes and this will be the corner node here and uh, i am interested in, in displacement of this node uh, in the second step so mm, that's uh, just the, the, the so this is the only uh, variable that i'm going to uh, analyze here uh, when it comes to history output uh, all right now i can submit the analysis and uh, wait for the results and then we will proceed to uh, post processing the results are available now so uh, let's open them and here mm, you can see uh, the results, uh, the, the first uh, result is displacement, so we are just looking at the displacement. We can also of course uh, analyze the stresses, but uh, we are only interested in, in displacement in this case, and in particular we are interested in, in displacement in mm, this third direction or z-direction. And as you can see mm, uh, we have several frames, and uh, those frames are related to different uh, frequencies. Uh, so mm, basically we obtained results for different frequencies, uh, and and uh, we can uh, compare them with the analytical solutions since uh, we always do that in, in those uh, videos. Um, so that's um, all when it comes to field output, uh, but uh, now uh, we are mainly interested in history output. Uh, so um, let me expand this uh, and uh, here you can find different uh, forms of, of the um, history output. So for this type of analysis you get uh, both real and imaginary results, then you have phase and, and magnitude. Uh, so those are the, the different uh, ways of, of uh, interpreting the or, or showing the, the results of steady state dynamics analysis. Um, in this case it's quite simple, we are not considering any imaginary component, so, so it's not a problem. Uh, let me just show you the analytical solution first. Uh, this time it's uh, calculated using CalcPad. And uh, this, this is the, the first formula mm, used f to mm, obtain the natural frequency. This is the same, um, basically, mm, maybe not the same formula, but um, the, the same way to, to calculate the characteristic of the system as in the previous video. And then uh, this uh, equation here uh, determines the displacement uh, at, at a specific uh, frequency. And uh, here I have the um, settings for the plot. Uh, those um, lines, th those two lines, and this one uh, is just to format the, the plot, so to add um, the legend descriptions, and this one is the actual uh, plot definition. Uh, so here we have the range of uh, 3 to 5 uh, hertz, uh, so that's the, the range that we analyzed in, in Prepomex. Uh, and if we are interested in particular frequencies, then you can evaluate them uh, this way. So for example, <coughs> for let, let me just maybe mm, switch to, to back to Propomex and now I will uh, open uh, those results here and uh, plot them uh, using uh, Propomex. So mm, here you have the uh, plot, uh, let me just uh, scale the, the legend. Uh, so mm, for example, uh, if, you, if you want to analyze the results at 3 Hz, we have 17 millimeters here and if, if we go to calcped we can see that we have uh, the, the same result at the, for this uh, frequency and then let's check the um, the five uh, the, the other side of, of the range so five hertz and for five hertz uh, if you look at the plot or, or the, those results in the table here you can see that it's uh, 
slightly above four millimeters and it's also uh, the same uh, pretty much exactly the same in calc pad uh, let me just show you something mm, because uh, you may wonder why this range is just is just three to five uh, hertz uh, why it's not for example zero to five uh, well mm, if i uh, specify zero hertz here uh, you will see that there's a major peak uh, and this peak uh, is uh, right at the uh, natural frequency so you can see that it happens at natural frequency and uh, this is where resonance occurs and the uh, magnitude of displacement basically jumps uh, uh, jumps so much that uh, you can see that it's basically maximum here and uh, here mm, you can notice the, the behavior uh, uh, when when the resonance occurs so we are not really interested in this part uh, instead uh, we want to analyze this slope here after the resonance so mm, that's why I, uh, selected the 3 to 5 hertz range and you can see mm, if you compare the the two plots you can see mm, that uh, there's a very good agreement between them uh, since if we compare them the values at, at both ends of, of the range or if, if we check some other values like uh, 4 uh, hertz for example you can see and uh, that is pretty much the same in uh, in prepomex so uh, we can say that the uh, that the agreement is, is very good here for this simple uh, problem of, of single degree of freedom uh, system. All right, uh, that's it for this uh, performance tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics of future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.